Will this be K in 2023? A season like no other before. Second consecutive winter, Ducati's extravagant team launch from the Dolomites and Madonna di Campiglio was back in everybody's calendar. We caught up with the defending world champion Alvaro Bautista, general manager Gigi Deligna and CEO Claudio Domenicali to get their thoughts ahead of new challenges for the 2024 season and how they're going to overcome them. The area we have to, to work on it is the extra weight on the bike, no? For sure, uh, with the more weight on the bike, uh, you have uh, you feel more difficult riding, especially on the fast corner, because with more inertia, the bike uh, goes wide and it's more difficult to, to close the corner. And also, for stopping in the hard braking, we, we struggle a lot. We will concentrate on this, try to to, to get penalized as less as possible, and, and try to be as uh, as the best uh, possible performance. There is it's not a, like a, a target, no, to, to win the three in a row, no. For me, it's more uh, to have good feeling with the bike, to keep uh, the working we, we did during the last two years, and then uh, only can win one rider, no, and we will try to be one of them fighting for for that. I'm really really happy about the two riders, you know. One is the at the experience of the of the champion, and so it's a, it's a, a a guarantee for us. And the second one is the young rider that uh, grew up very well with the super sport and uh, he, he was really, really fast in the test that uh, he did it during the, the final uh, part of the last season. And so I think uh, for the future it will be important to have him uh, on, our, uh, on our bike. We have probably five, six kilos to put on the bike at the beginning of the season, depending on the weight of Alvaro. Uh, and it's uh, you know it's not easy to put the, 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 this uh, ballast on the bike. I think that the Superbike project is quite uh, solid. Uh, Alvaro is mega fit. Uh, he's kind of getting uh, uh, a bit older, uh, but looks fantastic. You know, he's in a fantastic shape. I think Nicolò uh, did very well in this two years. In Superbike, uh, the level is very, very high. Alvaro, uh, actually Toprak, uh, Johnny, I mean, um, plus other riders are very um, competitive. So for him, in my opinion, will be a learning season. Uh, hopefully he can be on the podium uh, from time to time. And uh, why not? Even uh, I think that uh, if you could win one race, it would be fantastic. With the rider lineup itself, we couldn't start anywhere else. Nine seasons in green and six titles, but now someone's changed their colours for 2024. Jonathan Ray moving to Yamaha is one of, if not the biggest transfer in World SBK history. He's been lighting up the timing screens too already in testing. And whilst it may all be new for him, there's a lot of history with the family and Yamaha. This could be, no this will be, something quite spectacular. Cool story, because Let's say I started my whole motorsport journey with Yamaha with a PW50, potentially the most iconic motorcycle in the world for, for kids. And it's nice to finally get the chance to ride a Yamaha. You know, my father was a racer and he always raced with uh, Yamaha, with the YZF range. And it's really nice to be in the Yamaha family. Of course, I left a, a really nice team behind, but I found a, another great family in, in Yamaha. And first experiences have been really good so far. Hareth was Basically, I used a base bike from, let's say, Top Rack and Locatelli combination. I tried some different uh, chassis dimensions, um, uh, wheelbase. But apart from that, we, I just rode. I did laps and laps. And I think the next test will be more, um, more real testing where we can start to test some parts for the future. 
What about after three further tests on the bike? What's the potential of the Ray Yamaha partnership ahead of his 16th season of action? Through the Yamaha, it's, it's a very user-friendly bike. I'm enjoying riding it. I think it suits my style as well, that um, really flowing style. You see how Top Rack rode the bike was super aggressive. Then you can see how guys like Remy and Locker rode the bike more wheels in line but still super fast. You play your card right, you can be on the podium. So that's a really cool thing about Superbike right now and um, you know, I'm really lucky to be a part of it. Um, when you say I've been here 16 years, it makes me feel a bit old, but um, you know, I'm still fighting fit and ready to, to show up round one. Before Ray's move to Yamaha, the spotlight was with top rack Raz Gatlioglu, who the number 65 replaces in blue. The 2021 world champion has moved to BMW. An enormous leap of faith, one with many more uncertainties than Ray's move, but one that's just as exciting. Top Rack was fast from the start in testing, and he's been inside the top three throughout. Something he's very happy about. First lap, I'm just smiling, especially last corner exit. And I know, you know, uh, my the other bike, because four years I'm riding uh, the blue. But the last corner exits, I feeling first time unbelievable power, and after uphill, still feeling bike fast because the other bike after uphill feeling is normal. Every lap, I'm getting better. I understand the bike and also the traction work, and now also the gas connection is now much better. And uh, yeah, it's very positive. I am very happy. First impressions are all well and good, but Top Rack topped the most recent test at Portimao before the official test awaits at Phillip Island. Could this be one of World SBK's biggest turnarounds for BMW? For me, it's a fantastic day because uh, we did a very good job. After this test, we go to immediately race. We need a, a good setup for the race. And now we are 99% uh, ready to race and uh, the feeling is good. Every day we are getting better because we improve the bike. Finally, I'm feeling bike like a my bike, you know, I'm riding uh, my style and sliding. The team is very happy and the uh, team is, is the motivation is very high now. Dream, believe, achieve. The motto of Jonathan Ray could be shared with his Kawasaki replacement. Axel Bassani's childhood ambitions to be a factory rider has been reached and he's in green for 2024. Adapting from V4 engine configuration to an inline four has been hard for many in the past. Will El Boccia be any different? Pressure, no, normal. I feel uh, like, like last year I, will, I only want to do my, my best. So it's normal for me. I'm really happy to be with Kawasaki, really good team, good guys. I want to take my first win. It's, it's not easy because now the level is really high, all the riders are a good rider, so we'll see what happens, but uh, if we continue to work hard and to, to believe, we, we can arrive, I think. After a long rivalry with Bassani, 2023 race winner Michael Ruben Rinaldi finds himself out of a factory seat at Ducati, but remaining with the manufacturer, this time replacing his rival at Motor Corsa, with a non-factory environment with less pressure. After three years uh, with the Ruba team, uh, now is a beginning of new challenge, to be fast and uh, consistent in every occasion. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we can fight for the victory. For sure, uh, the level uh, is uh, much higher uh, every year, so it will be tough uh, because uh, a lot of strong riders. But uh, we will try. I will try my best, and uh, I think uh, it's not uh, far this, uh, this goal. My goal uh, remains uh, to stay in the top, and uh, the goal is the same on the factory team. Reigning double champion Alvaro Bautista has had a tricky pre-season. He's injured coming into 2024 after a nasty crash in the first test of the winter. With more weight on the bike than previous years, the injury and fierce opponents around him. Bautista's quest for his own titanic trio of titles is off to a shaky start. It's not uh, really too much painful, but it's always there. Um, yeah, for sure, it's not easy, no? Very difficult. Because basically, uh, I cannot make uh, any lap without uh, thinking about or to having a bit of pain uh, in all the precision, so it's not easy when you are like this. 
Nicolò is going really fast and also Toprak and Jonathan and many riders go very fast, no? So before I uh, arrived to, to think about uh, to fight with them, I have to recover 100%, no? So that, that is my, my, my first worry. Fourth in the standings in 2023 and with his best season in World SBK, Andrea Locatelli continues to grow in stature. He welcomes a new crew chief too, with Andrew Pitt moving to work with new teammate Ray, Tom O'Kane is reunited with Paul Denning's team for the first time since they were both at Suzuki in MotoGP in the early 2000s. A fresh feel for the number 55, could this year be the year he's living la vida loca to take a first win? He certainly hopes so. Honestly, I think he's uh, a big target, but um... With hard work, probably we can do, I don't know where, I hope uh, as soon as possible, but uh, maybe in Philip Island will be a dream, but uh, for sure we're working for that. I think I can learn a lot uh, from, uh, from Jonathan, so yeah, this is for sure something exciting also for me. Outside the top 10 in a championship for the first time in World Superbike, 2024 promises to be a year of bouncing back for Alex Lowe's. He likewise has a new crew chief as he moves to work with Pera Riba, a combination that's already paying dividends in testing inside the top three. Same but different. Obviously, I worked with Pera before at the Suzuki 8 Hours and uh, Jonathan leaving the team, it was uh, allowed us to have a bit of a shake-up inside KRT and yeah, it's been good, a uh, different way of working. To race in World Championship with your, your twin brother's fantastic. Uh, to be on the podium with him this year would be really special, it has to be our target. If I'm first or second, as long as he's third, then we'll be happy. It's going to be a, a pain and I think we'll have some good battles on track, but uh, yeah, it's one of the things I'm really looking forward to this year. He's ready to kick off 2024 in style and likewise bring BMW to the top. Michael Vandermark is reunited with top back Razgat Leoglu, both having been teammates at Yamaha in 2020. These two chuckle brothers are keen to turn BMW's fortunes around and into the regular race winning package that the Yamaha became. Although staying fit is likewise important. It's a new season, I'm feeling 100% fit again, so uh, just uh, try to forget the past and um, you know, just focus on this season. And it, I always want to win, I still want to win every, every weekend, so uh, nothing's changed there and that's still a goal. You can see BMW they really mean business now. It's not just only signing Topra, but also with the whole testing team and everything they set up. So uh, there's a lot of new faces in, in inside the garage as well. So they are investing a lot and they want to win. And you know that's, that's what we all want to do. A disappointing 2023 left Ike Lacona wanting more, but he stays at Team HRC for a third season. He has a new crew chief in none other than Tom Yoyik the highly experienced and successful MotoGP and Formula One engineer who will be by his side. Whereas there's a new team manager too in Jose Escamé. Xavi Vierge took a first podium in 2023 but couldn't repeat it. However, with a heavily updated CBR 1000 RRR featuring the lighter cranks, split throttle bodies and wings, Honda aren't slacking in their quest to return to the top. With my crew chief, I need to say that we have, uh, for now, a really good uh, relationship. Uh, I like a lot his methods to, to work inside the box, outside to the box, uh, the, 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 the way that he manages all the problems or he tries to explain me the changes on the bike. So, for now, I'm, I'm quite happy. Then let's see during the races if uh, I can say the same or not. The electronic, for example, we're improving a lot and I we feel more comfortable with the new electronic, but not with the package on the bike, so we still need some time to, to work more. We are focused on finding better traction and, and grip. Uh, it's our main focus and will be super important to find it before the season starts. The goal of everyone is to try to be fighting with the, with the best guys. Elsewhere, plenty more dark horses. Podiums, but no victory in his rookie season. Danilo Petrucci is a man on a mission in 2024. He's chasing a much-deserved first win for himself and team boss Marco Barnabo in their second season together on the Barney Spark Ducati. We are, uh, we are close to the, to the front. We are in the mix, so I'm, uh, I'm quite happy. This year I want to win a race. It's uh, really a big goal. 
and uh, at the end uh, I think uh, our target is to be the best independent rider and uh, step on the podium uh, as many times as possible. 10, 12 riders can, uh, can uh, be on the podium, so this is, this is really a good thing for the championship, not really a good thing for, uh, for us riding, because uh, in a moment you can be 12th or 3rd, uh, and uh, it's a big difference. Two podiums in the final round of 2023 saw double world supersport champion Dominic Agata mix it with a heavyweight to world superbike. Now the Swiss Dream maker chases a first win despite being unwell throughout pre-season testing. Teammate Remy Gardner is looking for a first podium and he was inside the top three in the first pre-season test at Jerez. Let's get their thoughts for 2024. Yeah, my, my target and my uh, goals are to be in the in the top six end of the of the season, to to try to win a race or win some races, to fight uh, many times for the podiums, and all, of course try to be the best Yamaha rider. We will see. Improve on what we did last year. Uh, yeah, if we can improve and make a step forward, that's good news. <laughs> Feet on the ground. I think you know top fives are, are pretty much you know the goal this year. Um, top five, top six, and, and just get points in all those races, because in the end, that's what counts for a championship. Race wins, a World Superbike runner-up, but two seasons within the Rocket BMW camp to quite frankly forget. Scott Redden remains a BMW factory rider, now with the Bonobo Action Team. With BMW's development being one of the fastest behind the scenes, don't write off the number 45 for a surprise. And don't think that his first two years with the German manufacturer are an accurate indicator of what could be this year. I feel good, to be honest. The whole team's been really amazing from the start and they've took me with open hands and believing in me, trusting in me, and that's given me a lot of confidence and that's something that I've kind of been looking for the past few years. And I think I've settled in really well here and I think we have a good feeling with everyone in the team which is a very positive start. I'd probably say it's one of the best teams I've been in. Um, everyone's just so relaxed, so happy, like they enjoy what they're doing and it just makes it a nice atmosphere. You do well, like I came in and it's like everyone's like clapping, like good job because I feel I did a good job and then they back it up. I just feel no pressure. Alongside Reading and ready for a second year in BMW, American ace Garrett Gerloff. Pole position from Magni in 2023 was a highlight of the year, as well as finishing top BMW in his debut season with the brand. Will 2024 see a return to the podium for this popular American? With Top Rack being here, that's a huge talent and he, he definitely knows what he's doing. Here's to see which direction he does take it, because I mean, Let's be real, he's going to be leading the projects to, uh, from now on. This, this team's like the most like a family that, that I've ever been in and it's it's just so awesome. I, I like want to show up to the track and, and I want to see all my guys because they're, they're like my some of my best friends. I'll keep pushing, I'm, I'm trying to represent my country the best that I can. We have a good team, I have a good bike and I'll be pushing for uh, for a better and better spots closer to the front. 2023 was the year where Philip Ertel showed his potential, breaking into the top five and cementing himself as a real challenger inside the top ten. He moves to GMT 94 Yamaha for a new challenge this season. The podium in the moment is uh, is very difficult to reach, but I think I speak for all the riders. It's very difficult for everybody. Of course, last year in Australia and also here we we had a P5, P6 it was quite some good weekends. A mixed debut season in 2023 for Brad Ray saw the incoming BSB champion snatch a top six at Imola, although a mid-season shoulder surgery halted his momentum. He's back with the Moto X Racing Yamaha team for this year with some big ambitions. I'm really excited. It's nice to nice to be back for a second year, back with Moto X Racing and, and Yamaha, so it's always nice to, to come back with the, the same team, uh, same bike, a bit of continuity is always good. I feel like the the sort of step this year that we're going to make. We've got to be fighting for the for the top 10, top 6 every weekend. Uh, the bike's capable, I'm capable as a rider, so it's just finding uh, the right way. Tito Rabatz has earned a seat on the World Superbike grid full-time for 2024 with Pachetti Kawasaki. The team race winners in World Superbike five years ago hope that a closer relationship with Kawasaki will bring the results they deserve with the 2014 Moto2 World Champion. This year, Kawasaki changed the engine. Uh, they make stronger engine. Chassis things are more or less the same. But uh, we need to work to uh, take profit of this extra power that we have. 
big name rookies are present right through the grid. Reigning World Supersport champion Nicolo Bulliger is one of them, and he's been the rider to beat in testing. Topping three of the four 2024 pre-season test days, number 11 is doing the riders who used the iconic number before him at Ducati Crown. Cool, calm and collected, Bulagas is full gas with the Aruba.it Racing Ducati team who writes off any chance of a title fight. We caught up with him after his first test in Ducati Colours back in 2023. I don't want to beat uh, Alvaro, I, I would like to beat everybody, so uh, yeah, for sure uh, Alvaro now is the point of reference for, for Ducati because he's the best, uh, but for sure Alvaro is uh, it's fast and uh, will be very difficult to, to beat him. But what about after dominating more pre-season testing and remaining fastest Ducati? I think every rider wants to beat everybody. What I know is that is not my problem because it's just my first year. I want to enjoy my first year and uh, who have to win the championship is not me. Plenty of names may look familiar, but there's one fast rookie set to engage in some serious feather ruffling. Andrea Iannone. After four years away, the maniac is back to play and he's been a revelation in testing. First stop, Phillip Island, a circuit he loves, although the local wildlife will need to take cover. We caught up with him just days after 2023 ended. I come back to, to ride a, a race bike. Uh, this is a, a really good feeling for me. We are here and we are possibly to, to, to ride, so this is the, the best feeling ever. So we, I, I'm seeing the race Sunday here, and uh, whoa, it's an unbelievable race, unbelievable fight from Toprak, uh, Alvaro. I hope uh, uh, arrives on uh, in this fight. What about after a little bit more testing where he once again demonstrated he was right at the sharp end? I'm happy, I'm happy to come back. So uh, I live uh, one more time, no? The, I live the dream. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, really beautiful. I think the most important is, is uh, we try to enjoy at 100% every moment. I come back and I want to leave uh, everything. One person who was happy to see him back was Claudio Domenicali, CEO of Ducati, who you know they was a factory rider for back in his MotoGP days. We are very happy to have him back with us. Uh, he's a very talented rider. Uh, and uh, he has to, for sure, for himself, uh, to adapt on a bike, which is very different from the MotoGP. Uh, the tyres are different, and so the bike is less solid altogether. The bike is moving more, so you will have to learn how to manage that, but uh, I think you will do. A spectacular team launch welcomed a new team for 2024. Mark VDS move across from Moto2 with Ducati Machinery and Sam Lowe's, meaning he joins identical twin brother Alex on the grid. With Mark VDS also coming across, the multiple world championship winning team are ready to get stuck in. I'm really happy and proud to be here. Um, the superbike class now is going, it's always been mega and always been strong and I think now is arguably the strongest it's been in 10 years I guess. You know, it's, it's a, the depth of field is amazing. The layout of the weekend, the format, the three races, the qualifying, the qualifying tyres, something I've, not, I didn't, I've never used in my life. So many, many things for us all to learn, but um, we've got a lovely group great people, great mechanics and uh, I'm really appreciative of that and I think when you do that together we can be excited about what's to come. In the end you want to always beat your teammate and your brother is even another level from that so I ain't got a teammate this year so I'll, I'll, I'll be we'll after Alex. A handful of tests throughout 2023 and a podium for Honda at the Suzuka 8 Hour. World Supersport race winner Taron McKenzie progresses to World SBK with Midori Moriwaki's Patronus MIE Honda team. He'll be joined by teammate from World Supersport last year, Malaysian Adam Noradin. The new bike, I haven't uh, ridden it here in Portimao, but hopefully for Australia it will be all sorted. Um, but yeah, looking forward to the new challenge more than anything. I've had a lot of experience on a, in a previous championship on a different manufacturer, so it'll be nice to um, ride the, the Honda full-time in, in World Superbike. When we get back to Europe, try and maybe set a, a points goal and, and move the goalpost further that way. This championship is coming tougher and tougher and uh, it's my rookie season and uh, many things to adapt and to learn. Uh, especially my first time is going to ride with a Honda Superbike. We're heading in uh, first round uh, in Phillip Island 
uh, with a big hook. Every manufacturer features something new for 2024, some bigger than others, but new nonetheless, whether it be rider lineup, management, or a new bike. We caught up with all team principals, starting with defending champions Ducati and Serafino Fotti. The rules change, but it's a rules, no? We respect our rules and uh, make no sense uh, to cry, but it makes sense to work, no? To find the best setup, to find the best bike, uh, to give Alvaro the best compromise. Could be an extra motivation for us uh, to try to win also with the extra weight on the bike. We like the pressure, no? And uh, of course, uh, we will do the, the best uh, as usual as possible uh, to try to confirm again uh, the title. We know really well uh, Nicolo, especially uh, at the beginning of uh, his career. No, He was a, a really great talent. Uh, from my personal point of view, could be uh, a surprise uh, this year. They lost their biggest asset and the rider who made an unrivaled amount of history for them. But following Jonathan Ray's departure, can Kawasaki bounce back with a refreshed feel inside the box? Team principal Guillaume Roda certainly hopes so. We will have a chance to upgrade the bike a little bit uh, more. And uh, this is what we are doing here now to, to introduce all those items and, and see how they work. I think an interesting movement to, to give uh, Alex a new, new way of work more close to the um, racing uh, approach. From Axel who needs to understand how the bike works even in terms of technical because he uh, needs to adapt a lot to the bike and uh, not only adapt the bike to him because it's coming from a totally different bike so he will need to make a I think a hard and long journey to understand how to manage this, this bike. The competition now is, is a lot. Uh, you, all the manufacturers are investing a lot. Racing uh, is a matter of uh, fight at the end and we will try our best. Same lineup, different manager. Meet Jose Escamet, who replaces Leon Camia at Team HRC. What are his biggest challenges for 2024? Well, the big challenge is going to be competitive, uh, if possible, since the very beginning. We know it's a difficult uh, challenge, of course, but we are working on it and it's, uh, it's our target. At the moment, it's too early to talk about results and we are just trying to, to follow our testing planning because, as you know, it's a completely new bike. This is the new era for BMW, of that there is no doubt. There's no place for hiding, though, with top back Raz Gatlioglu in the saddle, something both team principal Sean Muir and BMW Motorhead Motorsport director Mark Bongers are all too aware of. But they're ready for the challenge and the pressure. The whole project's rising now. It's rising to very near the top. We aren't at the top, that's quite clear. Um, top rack brings a certain amount of quality to the team that we've probably been lacking in the past. And I think as a group, as a team, the whole project from the test team right through to our Rocky BMW team, we feel that Top Rack can be on the podium very quickly. Um, and I say it in the past and I say it again now, if you are close to the podium, you're close to the win. Um, where that will leave us in the championship terms, I'm not sure. Um, but I think the first three races of the championship this year will, will define our season. I honestly believe the crew behind us is, is, super, is super strong. We've grown it year on year, we haven't stood still in any aspect of the project. Um, and I think we, our, our time will come soon. If I look back uh, many years, like over 10 years, where we had uh, Melandri and Jess Davis, we also had a very strong lineup. But uh, yes, I would confirm that this is the strongest lineup we ever had. We have reworked the aerodynamics of the bike from 2023 to 2024. In terms of the chassis, we will uh, hit the road with a revised uh, swing arm engine. We have a small update, an evolution rather than a revolution, uh, but every little bit helps. And uh, in this very competitive uh, championship, uh, you need that. After all the question marks in the press or the, the outside of BMW world, uh, where people say, oh, is that the right choice for Toprak? Um, you know, they have their own electronics, uh, the bike doesn't seem to turn very well, uh, braking. Um, and when Toprak came back with his first comments, he basically denied all of these question marks. You know, the, the bike stops, the bike turns, the bike brakes, the bike uh, accelerates. And um, that was actually 
yeah, gives me a positive feeling. The pressure is on, but um, we don't crack under pressure and we go for it. There's also a new face leading the technical development with Chris Gonshaw, a very present feature inside the World Superbike team in 2024. Back in World Superbike for the first time since 2012, when they had Marco Melandri and Leon Haslam. There's one mission at BMW, that is to win. The mission is uh, clear. We want to win the World uh, Championship title. And uh, I was working in the paddock uh, already 10 years ago with uh, Melandri and Haslam. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we had a quite a successful season in the past and uh, we will have some more in the future and the mission is clear. We want to get the title in the next year. So I think we have four fantastic riders, four equal bikes. So the possibilities are there for the future. I think everybody saw some pictures of the first uh, testing of Crop Rock and the pictures looked uh, quite similar to what he was doing in the past. So you can imagine that uh, the smile on his face was, uh, was there and uh, this was the answer, yeah. He, he had fun going out on the BMW, uh, enjoying the, the horsepower and uh, having some fun on the brakes, so we are looking forward. Top rack may have moved out, but with Jonathan Ray moving in, Yamaha are looking to take back the number one plates from Ducati. With Andrea Locatelli getting stronger, as well as the championship itself, Paul Denin, who originally had said that it was cool but weird seeing Ray in blue, is hugely excited for the year ahead. Sometimes walk in and go, oh, it's Jonathan Ray sat in the corner of the garage, you know, in, the, in our team colours. But uh, no, he's integrated with the team and uh, very quickly really feels like part of the family. I've worked with Tom in a previous life in MotoGP and um, uh, pretty much knocked on his door every August for a the last sort of eight years and the answer has always been uh, ah, I'd love to but and uh, this year we finally managed to make something happen. He's super enthused about uh, you know being back at the coal face and running a rider uh, who really wants to take a step and uh, challenge the elite guys. The development at Yamaha Europe's uh, R&D centre in Milan you know is ceaseless um, but effectively you know you're sort of squeezing the lemon uh, all the time to try and get more and more. We're looking for you know more acceleration, better stopping, better turning, exactly the same things that every single manufacturer is looking for uh, right up and down the uh, pit lane. Honestly, the point of difference of World Superbike is the quality of the racing and the authenticity of the racing. It's going to be uh, an all-out battle. It's like it's going to be a fairly golden season. Yeah. With Niccolo Bulliger moving up and a myriad of unpredictability behind, many fans are predicting that 2024 could be a classic World Super Sports season. Leading the charge in his third season in the class, Stefano Manzi is keen to get stuck in from the start. I don't want to look like uh, I'm the favorite or not, just I want to work with the team like we do last year. And uh, yeah, the, the goal is to improve what we do last year. When I back here uh, the day before the test, I was already like uh, smiling with the team and we was like, uh, yeah, we go 100% for sure. Dutch rider, Dutch team, could this be a Dutch dream? Glenn Van Stralen joins Tenkato Racing and partners up with Stefano Manzi for 2024. Will this be something just a little bit special? For me it's an opportunity to show uh, for me what I can do and I'm happy to do that with the Dutch team. Uh, I am standing in the championship from last year and of course with the Dutch team we hope to do something nice in us. An injury hit season for Jan on June meant his title charge ended after just three rounds last year. However, a podium at Jerez at the end of 2023 has fired the Turkish star up and he's still only 20. You know, everyone knows I think uh, I'm strong, but it was so difficult time for me after the crash. Uh, I did a very difficult surgery and uh, I needed to, after surgery, I need five weeks to lay down and do nothing special, you know, no sport, no gym, nothing. I think Manzi or me will be the champion, I hope, uh, and I wish good luck to everyone. Flashes of brilliance, but no rostrum just yet. 2021 World Supersport 300 champion Adrian Huertas has a huge opportunity with the Aruba.it Racing World Supersport team with Ducati. Now it's time to live up to that potential. The goal is to, to try to win races. Uh, I've never been on the podium on World Super Sports, so the first uh, goal is that. Uh, then start to win races, and at the end of the year, let's see where we are. 
sharing a track with eight-time MotoGP world champion Mark Marquez at Portimao, where Tass was able to get a big scalp ahead of the season starting. One of the biggest names coming into World Supersport in 2024 is multiple Grand Prix winner Nicolo Antonelli. After a disappointing season in the FIM Moto2 European Championship, the Italian has a new challenge with the Altair racing team. Yeah, the feeling is, uh, is nice uh, to, to be uh, here in this uh, championship. I will try to use my experience, but also I have to, to learn a lot uh, from this uh, new category, the new tyre, the new, the new bike, uh, everything. So, yes, for sure, I hope it uh, will uh, help me, but I also have to, to do experience here. After a victory in Barcelona last year, the next generation of soft wall glue has certainly arrived. Don't discount Bahattin in 2024, as he remains with MV Augusta. In the Philip Island, we want to start strong to keep the title hope alive. And we will see in the middle and end of the season. Apart from all of that, there are plenty to keep an eye on. Marcel Schotter came into the championship last year and seeks a first win. 2017 champion Lucas Mayas back on the grid full time with GMT 94 Yamaha. Federico Caracasulo is a veteran of the class but new to the Moto Zoo MV Augusta team. Lorenzo Baldazzari, a race winner and runner up in 2022. Tom Booth Amos, Oli Bayliss, Raffaele De Rosa, Jorge Navarro, and Yari Montella are just some of the stars on the 32 rider entry list for World Supersport this year. In World Super Sport 300, another land of opportunity, but one rider has a target on his back. Jeffrey Bowes is back in the class once again for 2024, looking to retain his title and go for a third, but there's competition behind. Mirko Jedi is one of his key championship rivals, as well as Matteo Venucci, both race winners last year. Bruno Iarachi's heroic double at Mazzano last year as a wild card earns him a full-time return to competition, whereas Peter Svoboda aims to build on 2023, where he was a race winner and briefly championship leader. Loris Vanneman will want to win again. Samuel De Sora is the class veteran with plenty of experience, hoping to put it to good use for a championship assault. Elsewhere, Kevin Sabatucci is always one to keep an eye on as he looks to get back to winning ways on a regular basis. Britain's Fenton Seabright always getting quicker too. Chinese manufacturer Kovi are back with 2017 World Super Sport 300 champion Mark Garcia. Whilst Aldi Mahendra, a race winner in 2023, is looking forward to a smashing 2024 season of World Super Sport 300 action. Take your pick as to who will be champion at the end of it all. There's also something new for 2024, the FIM Women's Motorcycle World Championship, widening the accessibility of the sport for all and bringing a huge opportunity like never before. In a press conference at the end of 2023, Patriot Naylor, Gregorio Levere and FIM President George Vegas shared all. This is not the starting point, it's a rival point. This is the top of the women's championship. The bikes are supplied and maintained by Yamaha. Uh, riders will bring up to three mechanics if they want. Minimum requirement is it's one mechanic helper. We will grow and we have a new world championship with a great success. Today it's a great day to start a new project. So thank you for all you to coming and promote it as it should, should be. I hope to this championship that is the future. I hope to this uh, championship more years. After a magical conclusion to last year, there's plenty new for this year. Rider weight alterations, new technical specs, and one of, if not the most competitive lineups we've ever seen. World SBK Executive Director Gregorio Lavia shared his overview of what's to come. There are quite a few changes uh, for 2024. Trying to keep the balance of the opportunities with all the manufacturers. Weight introduction, there is uh, RPMs adjustment, there is fuel tank capacity reduction, uh, super concession updates, not only in uh, chassis side, which was currently up to, to 2023, but as well on engine side. So what, what has been decided is to add a ballast to the machinery from a weight reference of a rider weight of 80 kilograms with all the gearing kit included, means helmet, leather and boots, at a multiple of 0.5 which means that 
if a rider it weighs 70 kilos, at 0.5 from 10 kilos of difference is to add 5 kilograms. The RPM means that uh, it's established by when you do the homologation, but uh, no cut down can be applied unless this uh, manufacturer is using extra RPM uh, due to a concession, I will say. It's a very great show and for me it's the best and we have a good of people, good riders, good teams uh, and good persons behind the scenes making it happen. So I'm really proud of what we achieve. There is fundamentals to switch on the TV and enjoy it. 12 rounds, 36 races and two new circuits. This is the 2024 calendar. It all starts at Phillip Island in Australia before heading to Europe and Barcelona. Round three is the legendary TT circuit Assen in the Netherlands before Italy and Mizano host round four. Donington Park is back to back with Most in the Czech Republic for rounds five and six. Round seven takes us to the Algarve in Portugal, Portimao and a sunset race in August. Round eight is from a completely new track altogether at Balaton Park in Hungary. Familiar territory welcomes us for round nine as Magni Corps calls in France. Round 10, our second new circuit, Cremona in Italy. The penultimate round comes from Aragon whilst the final chapter, Jerez in the south of Spain. One name, one rider, one rival for 2024. The World SBK field answered what we thought would be the most difficult question to ask. And I think it's fair to say we succeeded. Just one? Just one rider? Ah. <laughs> one is difficult. I couldn't call it now. <sighs> ah, that's mean, man. Whoa. Bah. I don't know. Hey. Oh, I don't know. One name. Um, uh, no, not sure. I don't have just one. It's gonna be all of them. <laughs> really, I don't know. Three, three. Uh, Alvaro Bautista. Well, top rack. Bradley Ray. Locatelli. Jonathan Ria. Uh, Alvaro. It's too many words to describe Bradley Ray. <laughs> not normal. Is that what he said? <laughs> Legend. <That's> Scott. <laughs> oh. Bautista looks strong. Tavi. I can tell you just one. Yeah, no, no. The way Bulega has been riding is super strong. It looks like Nicola. Bulega. <laughs> Toprak. I'm coming. Nico. Maybe me. Uh, Alvaro. Myself. Andrea. Okay, four, die. <laughs> new faces, new looks, new challenges, new characters. 2024 is going to be off the scale. Thank you so much for watching. See you in Australia from the 23rd of February. The new era is just about to begin.